each year there's another generation of tech, and yet each year it feels like our phones struggle to last through the day. We're at anything but a standstill, though. Battery technology has improved dramatically through the years. Not only has battery technology improved, the quantity of batteries we produce has also skyrocketed. The rise of electric vehicles is certainly a factor, but so too is the batterification of everything. Smart toasters, smart watches, smart shoelaces. Batteries are in everything. The growth of batteries is big business too. Each year, from today to 2030, battery demand is expected to grow by approximately 30%. Lithium, cobalt, and nickel are the key elements here. Amongst other things, lithium is widely known to be linked to water scarcity and cobalt to human rights abuses. So what ESG issue is nickel linked to? To understand that, we need to understand the role of nickel in batteries and how it's extracted from the ground to begin with. Nickel is a critical component for the cathodes of batteries. Cathodes are the bits of batteries that have electrons pumped into them. They're negatively charged, and without a cathode, you don't have a battery. In recent years, the amount of nickel used in cathodes has increased significantly, especially in batteries for electric vehicles. The most divisive figure in electrical vehicles, everyone's favourite source of C-suite drama, Musk, is on record saying that. What you really actually want to ask is what is the cathode and what is the anode? Right. Um, in our case, that's right. The tank. Um, also put it in the... But the buffet is actually 2% of the cell mass. So it's, in, it's like the salt in the solid. It's, it's a very small um, amount of the cell mass and a fairly small amount of the cost. Um, but it sounds like it's big because it's called lithium ion, but it, it, it really, like our battery should be called nickel graphite because uh, it's mostly nickel and graphite. Musk isn't wrong either. Nickel is so critical for batteries, it's hard to overstate it. Nickel is even more critical for the production of stainless steel blow. Up to 70% of current nickel demand is taken up by the production of stainless steel. That is to say, nickel is growing in importance, and that's reflected in both the amount of nickel produced worldwide as well as its price. All of this is to say that nickel may not be considered a critical mineral, but as long as we're producing stainless steel, and until a revolutionary battery technology comes along, and there's always one five years away, nickel's importance will continue to grow on the world stage. This graph shows how nickel is expected to grow in importance out to 2050. Note that the batterification of everything is projected to contribute significantly to nickel production. If we do manage to keep things at around 2 degrees of warming and successfully electrify the vehicle fleet, that will necessitate a four times demand spike in nickel. That's why companies like Ford are looking to shore up their access to nickel by investing in smelters directly. By now, you should be fairly convinced that nickel is important. So what are the issues commonly associated with its production? Well, step one of nickel production is to get it out of the ground. We're lucky here. Nickel is the fifth most common element on Earth and is not currently considered a critical mineral. But that doesn't mean it's just found anywhere. This map shows which countries have economically viable nickel reserves. The primary sources of nickel are sulfide ores and laterite ores, which require different extraction methods. Sulfide ores are typically mined underground, then processed using flotation to extract nickel sulfide concentrate. Laterite ores, on the other hand, are usually mined from open pits and require a more complex extraction process, such as high-pressure acid leaching. Tragically, these laterite ores are easier to work with after extraction and as such are the lower-hanging fruit 
despite the fact that they use open pit methods. Open pit mining deforests regions and takes up far more space than closed pit mining. Unfortunately, laterite ores also occur in more biodiverse and vulnerable locations than the sulfide ores. Nickel production and extraction can have several ecological issues associated with it. One major concern is the release of sulfur dioxide and other air pollutants from the smelting process. These emissions can contribute to acid rain and other environmental problems. Additionally, the tailings, that's the stuff left over, generated from nickel mining and processing can contain high levels of heavy metals and other contaminants which can pollute local waterways and soil. There are reports of waters around nickel smelters turning red. An example of a nickel pollution event occurred in 2019 in Papua New Guinea. A nickel processing plant owned by a Chinese company, Ramu Nico, discharged an estimated 200,000 tons of toxic heavy metal laced slurry in Jabasamak Bay, a popular fishing and swimming area. The spill killed marine life and caused health problems for local communities who rely on the bay for their livelihoods. This incident prompted widespread protests and calls for greater regulation of mining and processing activities in the country. The 200,000 tons of slurry released was nothing, though, compared to the millions of tons disposed from the facilities in years past. Ecological concerns are not the only ones when it comes to nickel. For example, in the Philippines, the indigenous Manobo tribe has been fighting against the Tambacan copper gold nickel mining project, which would displace them from their ancestral lands. The project is one of the largest undeveloped copper gold deposits in the world, and its development would require the displacement of an estimated 5,000 indigenous people from their homes. Recently, the decade-long support to fight against this project seems to have faltered. Land displacement can have significant social impacts, including loss of cultural identity, livelihoods, and community cohesion. It can also lead to conflicts between mining companies and local communities, as people may feel their land rights have been violated, or that they may not have been adequately compensated for their displacement. To mitigate the ecological and social impacts of nickel production and extraction, companies can implement best practices such as reducing emissions, using efficient water management strategies, and properly managing waste products. Additionally, government regulators can enforce stricter environmental standards and hold companies accountable for pollution incidents. Mining produces waste. That's unavoidable but there are ways to contain it. Many of the companies that actually extract nickel are unknown to laypersons. Big car manufacturers that will drive additional nickel production, however, are known to us. Send a cheeky email to the Fords of this world, asking them to carefully consider their ESG policies related to mining. Better yet, tweet at them. If you know of an uncovered ESG issue, let me know. Our league will happily give you the headlines.